How would you like to become a cyborg? Interfacing your brain directly with a computer to gain technological superpowers. And guess what? You could do it all today. You might think that's not possible yet, but you would be wrong. Elon Musk's Neuralink brain implant may get the biggest spotlight right now, but Neuralink is only one small company in the rapidly emerging world of brain-computer interface. There are currently hundreds of people out there who have successfully connected the human mind with computer technology, and many of them didn't even need brain surgery to do it. You can become a cyborg yourself, and we're gonna show you how. This is the truth about brain implants. This all goes back to a guy named Hans Berger. He was a scientist in the 1920s and was the first person to officially discover that the brain functions through electrical activity. So everything going on inside your skull, everything you've ever known and every experience you've had has been a series of electrical currents flowing through a lump of soggy gray meat. The problem now is that we are self-aware of our existence as lumps of electrified meat trapped inside decaying bodies, and that's probably a big reason why human beings have become so anxious in the past hundred years. Anyway, Hans Berger used this new revelation to develop a science called electroencephalography, or EEG. This is a method to detect and record those electrical signals inside the brain as they happen. What Berger found were these rhythmic or oscillating patterns of neural activity, what we often refer to as simply brain waves. Berger's early experiments were about as crude as you'd expect for the 1920s. He jammed a couple of silver wires directly into a patient's scalp, then connected them to a Victorian-era electrometer that used a glass tube filled with mercury to visualize the electrical pulses. Now, Obviously, the technology has advanced a lot since that time. I'm not going to drag you through the entire history of sticking wires into people's brains. The important takeaway here is that the fundamental reason for doing this has always been the same. We are trying to capture the most detailed recording possible of the electrical language going on inside our gray meat lump. The field of brain-computer interface, or BCI, wasn't really able to gain much traction until the computer technology had evolved to a point of being able to keep up with the human brain. So the first real BCI breakthroughs started to arrive in the late 90s. Here is how they did it. Instead of sticking wires into a patient's scalp, modern BCI goes straight to the brain itself, using an invasive surgery that exposes the outer layer, and then instead of two wires, they insert 100 electrode connections directly into the brain matter. This is made possible by something called a Utah array. This is a little square of metal covered in tiny pins, up to 100 of them, and each pin is connected to a thin copper wire that runs out the back of the array. These pins are inserted directly into the brain's outer layer, the cerebral cortex, and that enables these electrodes to capture a very high resolution recording of the electrical pulses that are occurring in the section of the brain where the implant is placed. The cerebral cortex is dense with neurons, which are cells in the brain that act as the transmitters and receivers for the electrochemical signal. Human beings have a lot of neurons, and that's made possible by the wrinkled texture of our cerebral cortex. The wrinkles allow for a larger surface area in a smaller package, and they are critical to human-level intelligence. The simple-minded mammals, like squirrels or manatees, all have smooth cortex layers with very minimal surface area, while intelligent mammals like humans, chimps, dolphins, and elephants all have deep wrinkles. Fun fact, if you peeled the cortex layer off your brain and smoothed it out flat, it would be about the same size as a small tablecloth, which is a neat visual, so good luck to the video editor on that one. Anyway, the neural activity picked up by the spikes in the Utah array are then fed into a signal processing device that generally sits on top of the patient's head. That processor is essentially translating the analog signal from the brain into a digital language that the computer can understand, and it transmits that signal through a big cable. And since both halves of your brain function differently, there is typically going to be at least one of these implants on each side of the person's head. But there can be up to six devices implanted in one patient. 
So while much more evolved than jamming piano wires into the scalp, the Utah Array is still a gruesome procedure. It's not something that you'd want to just do for fun, that's for sure. These early BCI devices were developed with the sole purpose of helping people with severe disabilities to regain control over their lives. The premise being that even if a person is suffering from full body paralysis, their brain is still generating the output signals to control the body. It's just that the connection within the nervous system has been severed, either by a physical injury or a degenerative disease, but a computer interface could help to bridge that gap between the brain and the outside world. In its most simple applications, this can allow a BCI to take the place of a keyboard and a mouse, allowing the patient to control a computer using only their brain waves. When an able-bodied person uses a computer, the output signals from our brain are transmitted through our hands to the input devices on the computer, which then convert our physical movements into computer code. The BCI is just a way of bypassing the hands and the keyboard and bridging those output signals from the brain directly into computer inputs. This is a procedure that has successfully been reproduced in dozens of human patients all over the world. In a higher level application, BCI can bypass a physical injury to reconnect the brain to the body. The best example I've seen so far is the story of Gert Jan Oskum. This guy was injured in a motorcycle accident 12 years ago that left him paralyzed from the waist down. But he's recently regained the ability to walk thanks to BCI technology. In Mr. Oskum's case, he has Utah arrays inserted into both halves of his brain and those are connected with the two devices that he wears on a head strap. Those brain sensors are then wired into a device on Oscom's walker that is then wired into a second electrode array implanted in his spine. The computer placed in between the two implants uses machine learning to decode the neurological signals coming out of the brain and converts those into electrical stimulation that is delivered to the spinal cord, which will then trigger the desired muscle movements. As miraculous as this technology is at its current state, there are some obvious drawbacks and severe limitations. Even the researchers working on Mr. Oscom's case have said that the brain to spine interface is pretty much just limited to simple actions like walking and wouldn't be able to restore more complex functions like arm and hand movement. So if you know all of that, then you know the basics of how a Neuralink brain implant works. Fundamentally, Neuralink is not doing anything unprecedented with BCI, they're just making some natural improvements to the capabilities by leveraging new technology and engineering. This is the approach that Elon Musk has taken with every single one of his companies. He identifies a sector that is so deeply entrenched in the status quo that they've already fallen a decade or more behind in their technological innovation. And then Elon inserts a new startup company into that sector that is brave enough to take the kind of massive risks on bleeding edge technology that none of the established players would dare to make. Tesla didn't invent the electric car, but they did leverage science and engineering to make a better electric car than anyone had ever done before. SpaceX didn't invent any new rocket technology, they just pushed the science to a limit that no one else is brave enough to touch. The Boring Company didn't invent tunnel boring, obviously they're just trying to do it much faster than anyone else has ever even considered possible. And Neuralink didn't invent computer brain implants, they are just leveraging new technology to make BCI more capable and accessible than ever before. There are three main categories where Neuralink is pushing the industry forward. Number one is the physical interface of the electrode into the cortex. Neuralink has deleted the Utah array entirely and replaced the tiny square of rigid pins with a lacy mesh of ultra thin flexible wires. This allows Neuralink to increase the number of electrode connections per implant by an order of magnitude from 100 to over 1000. It also allows for each electrode wire to be strategically placed inside the brain tissue instead of being limited to a physical square. The wire can be placed directly on a select brain neuron, and this also increases the area of coverage for one implant. The Utah array and the area of the brain that it can interface with is smaller than a fingernail, while the Neuralink is the size of a large coin. 
In addition to the increased functionality, the thin and flexible nature of the Neuralink threads causes much less traumatic damage to the brain tissue, creating less inflammation, less scar tissue, and reducing the risk of a physical rejection of the implant. In theory, a Neuralink could remain implanted for decades while a Utah array will typically need to be removed after 30 days. Number two is the implant procedure. A Utah array will require the expert skill of a top-tier neurosurgeon, a very special kind of doctor that is in very short supply and is often engaged with more important life or death procedures. Whereas Neuralink has designed their implant to be installed by an autonomous surgical robot, basically a sewing machine that places their electrode threads into the brain with superhuman precision. So not only does this make the surgery more accessible, in theory it should also be much safer than a human-led procedure. Number three is the packaging and connectivity. The most incredible promise made about Neuralink is that anyone could have one of these implants functioning inside their head and you would never be able to tell just from looking at them. Contrast that with our typical Utah Ray patient and it's pretty damn obvious that these people have brain implants. Beyond just aesthetics, this means that Neuralink patients could use their device everywhere and anywhere unencumbered by wires and headsets. In Neuralink's design, the blocky signal processing device is replaced by cutting edge silicon microchip technology. The most advanced chip makers in the world have managed to shrink the silicon transistor down to a size of just three nanometers. It's impossible to really fathom just how small a nanometer is, but this is the scale that we use to measure molecules and atoms. And this is what allows us to fit complex computers into impossibly small packages, such as the Neuralink implant. And then the cables are simply replaced by Bluetooth wireless connection. We all know how that works. Same deal as your headphones. Now, that all sounds awesome, right? Does that mean we should all be lining up for brain surgery? Well, it's complicated. These invasive BCI implants should be reserved only for the people who really need them the most. And even if the day comes when Neuralink is abundant and at least somewhat affordable, it's still important to remember that even a commonly performed brain surgery can still be dangerous and there's no way to know the long-term consequences on your body of having wires stuck in your brain and a microcomputer tucked away in your skull. But if you wanna start using BCI technology right now with no brain surgery required, then there are options available. Kernel BCI is a startup that was founded in 2016, the same year as Neuralink by a guy named Brian Johnson. You probably recognize this dude because he's having a moment right now as the tech executive who spends millions of dollars trying to reverse the aging process. He's gone a bit weird lately, but Kernel is a legit company, so we'll try and stay focused on that. Kernel has chosen to walk a different path from Neuralink. Instead of relying on an invasive surgical procedure, Kernel uses a non-invasive BCI headset. It basically looks like a techno space hat. It's a bit extra, but the Kernel Flow headset is a powerful brain-computer interface. The advantage of these non-invasive headsets, aside from not requiring a hole in your head, is that they can position electrodes all around the perimeter of your brain, so you're able to get data from the entire cerebral cortex all at the same time, where an invasive implant, even a Neuralink, can only read data from one small physical section of the brain. In order to read a full brain all at once with implants, you'd need to turn a person's skull into a cheese grater. The downside to these non-invasive headsets is that they can't capture the specific nuances of the individual neurons. There's just too much skull and biomass in the way that diffuses the signal. Imagine the picture of the brain from a device like Kernel as a wide angle panoramic photo of a landscape where you can see everything, but the resolution is very low and you can't zoom in on any of the details. While the picture from a Neuralink would be like a close up telephoto image of one mountain peak. The photo could be perfectly crisp and full of detail, but you wouldn't be able to see the rest of the landscape around it. Kernel will never be able to make lame beggars walk and blind men see, but it does allow us to very easily observe the function of the brain and conduct our own experiments on how the brain responds to specific events. For example, Kernel participated in a study in 2022 that aimed to monitor the effect of psychedelic therapy on the brain. Disclaimer, don't do drugs unless they're given to you by a doctor, but in this case, Colonel's founder, Brian Johnson, was given an intramuscular injection of ketamine, 
and a flow headset was used to monitor his brain activity before, during, and after the ketamine therapy. By doing this, the company was able to map out the changes in Brian's neural activity while under the influence to see the lingering effects of the experiment for days afterwards. It's kind of like that old commercial, this is your brain, this is your brain on drugs, but with real scientific data instead of government propaganda. But this is the effect that BCI is having right now. This isn't the future, Kernel is changing the world today. But while you may not need a hole in your head to use a Kernel Flow, this obviously is still a very expensive and exclusive technology. So is there any hope for average Joes like you and I to actually become BCI-enabled cyborgs? Let me introduce you to OpenBCI. These folks are what you might refer to as biohackers. They have open-sourced BCI hardware and software and put it out there for anyone to use and experiment with. If you have access to your own 3D printer, OpenBCI sells a package for just 1500 bucks that will give you everything you need to build your own biosensing headset. And they have all of the parts and accessories to allow anyone to start modifying, customizing, and developing their own BCI technology. I wouldn't know the first thing to actually do with this stuff, but I want it. Anyway, the flagship product for OpenBCI is something they are working on called Galia. It's a combination of biosensing electrodes integrated into a virtual reality headset. The headset can simultaneously measure the user's heart, skin, muscles, eyes, and brain. This thing takes VR to the next level and incorporates your own brainwaves into the virtual experience. It's not exactly affordable starting at 25 grand, but if you want to sell your car or remortgage your house to fund the most insane VR experience you can imagine, then it is a possibility. Anyway, Hopefully that all helped to open your mind to the wide world of brain-computer interface and the capabilities that this technology has to offer. How about this for a deal? If you get this video to 50,000 likes, I'll buy the 3D printed BCI headset and we'll make a brain experiment channel. It won't go well, but it could be fun. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.